Hello friends and welcome to another lecture on computational numerical methods. Today we will learn the secant method to find the root of equation. I am Professor Arvind Prasad. The secant method is also one of the methods to find the root of a polynomial equation with a single variable. Now let's take an example. Let's say we have an equation fx is equal to x square minus x minus 6. So if we draw this polynomial it's a quadratic equation and it has its roots at x is equal to minus 2 and x is equal to 3. Now let's see how do we use the secant method to find one of the roots. Let's say we take the root as x is equal to 3. We want to find the root in the positive x axis. So it can be visually demonstrated here. Let's plot the equation once again in the positive x direction. So the blue curve represents the quadratic equation in the positive x axis. We already know that the root here is x0 is equal to 3. Of course, we will use the method, the secant method to calculate this root. But let's say we know the root is at x is equal to 3. Now, let's say we First, what we do is we take two points. Okay, now these two points are taken in the domain where the function is either positive or negative. That is, you have to choose two values of x, that is the independent variable, in the domain where the function is either positive or the function is either negative. Okay, so... I have chosen it as x0 and x1. So x0 is also x i minus 1 and x1 is x i, let's say. So at these two values, we find the value of the function. Once we do that, we draw a secant through it. And the secant is extended till the x axis. Now where it meets the x axis, at that point, fx is equal to 0. And that is also the point x i plus 1. Now, this is of course how we do it visually. But if we want to do it analytically, it's going to be this way. 0 minus f x minus 1. That is, this is here f is, f x is 0. So 0 minus f x i divided by x i plus 1 minus xi. This is nothing but the slope of this portion of the secant, which is of course equal to the slope of this portion of the secant, which is nothing but f x i minus 1 minus f x i over x i minus 1 minus x i. Now we rearrange this equation and we get a formula to estimate x i plus 1. So using this formula, we estimate x i plus 1 then what we do is we find the value of the function at xi plus 1 and then again draw a secant between xi and xi plus 1. Now this will again extending this secant to the axis x where fx is equal to 0 we get xi plus 2 and we continue this process till we finally converge to the root. So once we converge to the root what is going to happen is xi plus 1 is going to be equal to xi. We will not find any further improvement in the values. Now, let's see how can we do it on in a spreadsheet. So, a spreadsheet would be a great way to actually demonstrate this method. And uh, whatever I demonstrate in the spreadsheet can also be used to do it on the paper with the paper and pen and calculator so it's very simple if i demonstrate it on a spreadsheet you can always use pen paper calculator and do the same calculation to arrive at the roots so let's have a look at that so here's the spreadsheet the equation that we have is fx is equal to x square minus x minus 6 and i have written down the formula for estimation of x i plus 1 so let's take the first values of xi and xi minus 1. So we take 4 and 5. At these two points, the value of fx is 
positive. So we write it down here first, x i minus 1 is 5 and x i here is 4. Now we copy down these values. So I have already copied it down here in the cells. Okay. Now what we do is we calculate fxi. So calculation of fxi is going to be this, the whole square minus this minus 6. Okay. And we calculate fxi minus 1. So this is going to be equal to this the whole square minus this minus 6. So there we have, it is 14. Now we calculate the value of xi plus 1. Now xi plus 1 is going to be equal to xi, that is this value minus, we open two brackets, then in the first bracket we are going to have fxi, so this is going to be the value of fxi multiplied by, we again make a bracket and here we are going to get xi minus 1 minus xi. Now this is going to get divided by fxi minus 1 which is this minus fxi. So this is the first estimate that is xi plus 1. Now what we are going to do here is we are going to copy down the value of now xi will become equal to 3.25 and xi minus 1 will be equal to 4 and we calculate the values of the function that's it and now let's drag all these columns and as we can see here, we arrive at the root. So what we have done here essentially, when we calculated the first value, that is assume, let's assume that this is x1 and this is x0. Using x1 and x0 and using this formula, we have estimated x1. x2, I'm sorry, x2. I correct myself, this is x2. Now we take the value of x2, okay, and we replace it in the place of x1 and in the place of x0 we replace the previous value of x1 so we take 4 here and we take x2 here and we use this to estimate the values of the function and we keep doing it this is what this func formula is also doing what it does is whatever subsequent values of x i plus 1 you get you use it and replace it in the place of x i and you increment this by one position. That is, if this is x0, this you make it x1. If this is x2, this would have been x1. Now you replace x2 here and you continue it off. Now, why does this method converge at the root? Let's have a look at this. Now, at the root, whenever you arrive at the root, what is going to happen is fxi, the value of fxi is going to be zero right and value of x x i minus one also would be very very close to zero the, so this difference would be very very small and it's very evident here in this calculation the difference here between the two values of the function is very small and the length of the chord is also very very small so this also tends to zero this also tends to zero and this also tends to zero so this entire expression tends to zero therefore the subsequent estimation is equal to the previous estimation. That is why this method converges. Now we need to remember here that whatever initial values you take, if there is a root in the close neighborhood of that, it's going to converge. Now let us say supposing we choose two values and in the close neighborhood of that there is a minima of the function. What is going to happen is the method is now going to diverge off. Right. So please remember one thing, then it will just diverge off immediately and uh, you will not find the root. So you have to be very careful in the sense that the selection of the two values here uh, is something which you have to take close by to the root. You have to estimate, okay, the roots would be somewhere in 
uh, this area. So for this, what you can do is you can develop your own algorithm and have some search methods where it would actually find out where the roots are. Now, one interesting way of doing it is to find out for any polynomial or a mixed polynomial. What do I mean by mixed polynomial? That it has x, x square, x cube, powers of x, and then it has functions which are non-polynomials. So I call, call them mixed polynomials. So here what happens is you can, whenever you have these kind of equations, what you can do is you can solve this equation for various domain values. That is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and wherever the function value changes from a positive to a negative value. Yes, you are going to have a root in that domain. So one can choose that domain and then put it straight away. Now you can take bigger domains and also do it. Instead of taking a domain difference of one, you can take a domain difference of two, you can take a domain difference of three also, and you can do it. This method is going to converge. It will converge to the nearest root that you are going to have in that domain. So that was all about how to use this method. And it's a very simple yet an effective method to get the roots. So that was all about what is a secant method. Now remember one thing, just this is just for a trivia, sort of a mathematical trivia. Now if we use the regular falsy method and in the regular falsy method we take the two domain values or the two bracket values as values where the function is positive. The method behaves as a secant method. The entire algorithm now starts behaving as a secant method. Okay. So in regular falsy method, as it is discussed, you have to always take the bracket values where at one of the points, the function is negative and the other point, the function is positive. Let's say you don't do that and you put the values of the bracket, the bracket values as where the function is either both at the both points positive or at the both points negative. The method will converge because what will happen is the algorithm itself will start behaving as a secant method. So a regular falsy method is nothing but a modified way of a secant method. Okay, they're just cousins, you know, and uh, they work on slightly different methods, but they, are, they, they work more or less the same way. But the method you, the way you start the method is different in these two cases. Fine, guys, that was all about uh, secant method. Do like and subscribe my channel. Have a great day. If you have any comments, do write the comments. And if you want any lectures on any other areas in computational numerical methods, as you can see, I make things very easy. Just write to me. I'll make a video for that. Goodbye. Have a great day.